Welcome to the Ag Maps Users video series. My name is Kevin McCaig. I'm the Water Quality Engineer for the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and World Affairs. And today I want to show you how to create water erosion potential maps using Ag Maps, the geographic information portal that uh, is operated by OMAPRA. So let's get started. To begin, I want you to open up the uh, Google Chrome as a web browser. We find Google Chrome works the best for Ag Maps. So once you get the um, search engine loaded up, just type in Ag Maps. I've done that a few times before, so it pops up fairly quickly. And that'll take you through a search to a link that will direct you to the Ag Maps GeoPortal website. So click on that, and we arrive at the OMAFRA website where Ag Maps is located. Now. To launch the Agricultural Information Atlas, just click on this line, Launch the Agricultural Information Atlas. This then takes you to the AgMaps website, and it starts up. And you can do a lot of different things with AgMaps. There's uh, lots of different layers there, including uh, uh, your tile of drainage information, there's soil type information, all those types of things that might be relevant for your, for your farm. When it begins, it'll start up with a site disclaimer. So simply scroll down there. You can read that if you want, but go to the bottom and you can select I accept, and that will get you ready to use the Ag Maps tool online. Now, when you're in Ag Maps, you can see a map of Southern Ontario, and you can move around with your mouse. You can scroll in or out to areas that you're interested in and find your location. For me, I'm interested in a field just south of London or near St. Thomas here. So I'm going to zoom in really close into that area and uh, get to close so I'm ready to go. Now, there's different layers that you can turn on and off in Ag Maps. And for the water erosion potential map tool, I like to have the aerial imagery layer on as a primary uh, layer. And so what you do, go to the bottom left here, there's this uh, line called Select Map Layers. Click on that. And it brings out a whole number of different map layers that you can turn on or off. If you slide down to the bottom, you'll see Ontario imagery slash air photos. So I like to turn that one on. And then to see it, I slide this slider bar over. So that makes that uh, land information layer less obvious and, and so just makes it a more see-through. And so we zoom in there then, and we can still see some of the topographic information, but at the same time, we see all the imagery below it. So let's zoom in to find this uh, field that I'm interested in. Actually, I'll back out a bit so I can find it a bit better here. Uh, pretty close. Now you can type in the lots and concessions as well, if you know that, and that'll, that'll find it as well. So this is the field I'm interested in here. You can see there's a bit of erosion happening on that field and so it'll be interesting to see well what is the inherent erosion potential on that property. Now by inherent I mean what have you inherited? If you own that property what have you inherited in terms of its potential to erode and its risk for erosion? So and we focus here with this tool on the water erosion part. So let's go and see what that potential is on this particular property. To do that go up to markup and printing Go over then to the Create Map. This brings up the list of the types of maps that you can prepare in Ag Maps. Go to the very bottom, and there's one called Water Erosion Potential Map. That then brings up this worksheet for the Water Erosion Potential Map, where you can fill in some information. The farm name, for example. So I'm going to type in Example. And the field name, if there's a known field name, I'm going to just type in one for that. And then uh, the next question it asks, well, what is the field boundary or the area of interest? So you click on that little icon there, and that allows you to draw the perimeter of the field that you're interested in. So I will start by clicking on the edge of the field here and start drawing that perimeter. I have to slide up a bit here to get, get that. Oops. Down. slide up to the top of the field. Across, we'll take out this bush area that's not being worked on the farm. 
close that corner, come on. And then we'll close it off by double clicking here. And that'll create the polygon. And you see it's off doing some calculations and saying extracting map. Now look, that little black dot there tells you the centroid of the area that you just uh, delineated. And on the left side, you can see it's populated the lower tier municipality, the geo township, and the concession for that particular area delineate so it saves you having to look that information up okay so already we have the map here this is called the water erosion potential map for this field and so you might want to say well that's good what does what do the different colors mean and so we have a legend that uh, refers to each of those let's just go down and see what that legend is the legend for this inherent water erosion risk map uh, that's prepared using egg maps is as follows uh, less than six metric tons per hectare per year is very low. That's the classification we've given it. So that's the green color. The lighter green color is between six and 11 metric tons per hectare per year or low. And then between 11 and 22 is moderate. And that's the yellow color. The orange color is 22 to 33 metric tons per hectare per year. And then greater than 33 is the red color or very high. So those classifications, a metric ton per hectare per year is kind of a standard way of estimating soil loss on an annual basis. And uh, really, if you one metric ton of soil loss is the equivalent of a thickness of two sheets of paper. So it's not very thick. You wouldn't really see one ton being moved off your field, but you, you would see 33 tons. I'm pretty sure of that. Now, remember, this is the inherent water erosion risk. It's not the actual risk. Um, that inherent means what are the characteristics? What could it potentially be? It's kind of like if it was bare soil all the time, what would be the uh, risk of that soil moving in the field? Now we, we chose these categories because it matched up with the Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada's AGRA Environmental Indicators Risk Mapping uh, Tool, which uh, they use to get an evaluation of how are things changing across uh, Canada. And so we thought we'd have it line up with that for this potential map. However, we know that uh, landowners don't keep their fields bare all the time. They have crops and they have tillage systems that they use on those fields. So we can estimate what is the actual and annual estimated erosion rate on that field based on the crops and tillage practices used on that farm. So let's take a look at how you can do that. So that's when we go into this area here called method to determine the C factor. Now the C factor is just a, a representation, a numerical representation of the tillage and cropping practices that would be used on that farm. Now, OMAFRA is developing a set of tables that you can use to get uh, some of the more common rotations and tillage practices that are out there that are used in Ontario. And so that can be made available to you to, to come up with some numbers. Alternatively, you can use the Russell 2 tool that's available online as well on the OMAPR website. And there are uh, some educational tools to assist you in operating that as well. But um, if you want to get a real quick start on it, um, if you hit the down arrow here, you'll see select single crop and tillage method. So for a single crop and a single tillage year, you can come up with a rough approximation of what that erosion rate might be on an average annual basis. Um, so right here, the crop, let's go in and let's say, let's say the, the landowner is growing some soybeans this year. And let's say he plowed it in the fall. So we'll select fall plow. And so from that then, we can then estimate, we can do a recalculation of the map to come up with, well, what is the average annual soil loss using soybeans and fall plow as our tillage and cropping practice? So it's off doing that. Now, while it's doing that, just notice down here, I have two buttons here. One's called display the inherent water erosion potential map. That's what we had before. And that's what is there right now. You can see this map here is that original map that we had. And then underneath that is display annual water erosion estimate map. So that is the map that incorporates the tillage and the cropping. So in this case, the soybeans and the fall plow. Now the inherent water erosion potential map had an average annual soil loss of 23.4 tons per hectare per year. So that's pretty high, very high risk field that we're looking at here in terms of sheet and rill erosion. 
the uh, now let's take a look at what the map looks like with soybeans all plowed so let's hit this button here and a new map is shown not much different but you can see the mean annual soil loss dropped from 23 down to 11.7 so that has done something at least we've got uh, we've dealt with some of the erosion on that field just by the fact that we are managing it we're, we're growing crops and we're trying to get some cover through the year on it but it doesn't seem like that big a drop considering uh, from 23.4 to 11.7 the map hasn't changed that much and there's a reason why that uh, might look that way let's go back to the uh, map or to the uh, legend here so the inherent water erosion risk maps that are prepared use this scale so very low is less than six tons per hectare right up through to very high which is greater than 33. however when we turn and we start looking at the cropping and tillage practices we use a bit of a different legend scale here so we've got the average annual water erosion estimate estimate maps using this scale so very low is now less than two tons per hectare per year low is two to five tons per hectare per year moderate is five to ten high is 10 to 18 and then greater than 18 is very high now the reason why we changed the scale is because we wanted to start now looking at some of the sustainability aspects of erosion and so various literature would suggest that if you're over especially if you're over five tons per hectare per year and ideally you should be less than two tons per hectare per year those are if you're more than that then you're likely your erosion control is not sustainable we need to keep it down ideally less than two but two to five you're in that sort of uh, possible zone so that's why we have the greens between less than five and then when you start getting over five you start getting yellow orange and red so that's the uh, new scale that you'll see whenever you're using that average annual soil loss map or looking at those those maps the ones that have incorporated the c factor okay so let's go back now and see what uh, we could do we've got this uh, annual water erosion estimate for the soybeans as shown on this field so let's say this could be a map of what you're currently doing and let's say well what if i no-till those soybeans what would difference would that make so instead of fall plowing let's go with no-till and let's recalculate that and see what the new map would look like we'll give it a minute here and you'll see that the mean annual soil loss value will change when the when the new map pops up and uh, there'll be uh, a new opportunity to look at our mapping options so there's the new map with no-till brought it down from the 11.7 down to 2.9 so that's a significant improvement and you can see it's showing on the map as well so now we're down to something reasonable we're less than five so not bad but we still have some areas that are in that yellow zone suggesting they're not sustainable in that area and so we could still possibly do better now we can't do much better if we want to grow continuous soybeans uh, so now we're starting to look at well do we what, what rotations can we use what uh, are the other options we have to to do that and so so um let's for example let's try uh, the best we could ever be is probably hay so let's go take a look at some hay and then let's bring it down it's not it is no till but let's call it permanent cover and then let's recalculate that with hay and see what our map looks like now so again it goes off and, and does the calculation based on that c factor you can see the new c factor it's using there it's uh, 0 0.005 and so it should come up soon with a new map here and there it is and you can see that entire field now is under total control sustainable practice for that field uh, in uh, that particular setting so so i encourage you try it on your own farm try it on your own fields see what the inherent risk is what what were you given in when you purchased that land as a as in terms of the potential risk for that property in terms of soil erosion and uh, then try your existing crops what are you uh, growing now what rotations are you using and your tillage practices you're using look at the combinations there can you get it into the greens and if, the, if not then uh, what 
options could you do to bring it down to that level? So hopefully you uh, are able to do that and, and give it a shot and uh, give me a call if you have any questions. My phone number is 519-835-6078. I can provide you with more information on uh, calculating C factors for other crop and tillage combinations if you'd like. Okay, bye for now and have a good day.